Well, we just had a small fire in the house. So what I'm doing with the internet and also the main power that comes into the house, I mean, I guess I should have done this from the start. So one of the, each one of these boxes are going to be mounted on the house. I'm gonna make a metal bracket like I did for the ERV vent, just so I have a clean surface to mount these boxes to on the exterior of the shipping container. And the reason why I'm doing this is because, well, one, for the power wire, I have a disconnect that's not right at the breaker box. So I have a disconnect, I can unhook the wires, and if say, if I want to move this barn completely somewhere else, I can have the option to do that. Where before, I didn't have that option because I would just have the main power wire run from the breaker box, down through the walls, underground, and then up into the barn. So I would have had to have dragged the power wire around, it, it just would have been a mess. So I'm gonna have a disconnect, uh, a place to disconnect the wires and then pretty much the same thing with the ethernet cables that because our uh, wi-fi router is inside the barn and that's probably where we're going to keep it in the future the reason why i'm doing two boxes is because i didn't know this at the time when we first ran those power wire or that first cable conduit underground but you can't run communication cables alongside with your power wires because it'll interfere with the signal so I have to run separate conduit for that. And then I'm gonna have its separate own little box where I could disconnect it and run it to wherever else I need it. So that means more digging? So that means more digging. <laughs> Your little doggy window. <laughs> <laughs> had a small fire in the house. I leave for two seconds. <laughs> it's a little longer than two seconds, but anyways. Uh, yeah, so we had our first non-electrical electrical fire. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, what I was doing was welding on the outside of this plate and behind it was two t-shirts. They were there, originally there, just to protect the wires from the grinding and I didn't think about it to take them out of the way for welding. And after welding for several minutes, they bursted into flames. <laughs> there goes my painting shirts. So yeah, I didn't even know it. I was welding in the bottom, the bottom of the uh, bracket and I could see flame through, this, through the crack where I haven't welded yet. And I was like, oh crap. 
and I saw another flame right next to it. I'm like, oh my God, this is, shut everything off real quick, run inside, and these t-shirts should just roar and flaming. And this is the aftermath. Good thing that the worst thing that happened was uh, the insulation on the power wire, on both the power wires got a little charred, or I should say fully charred because they're down to bare metal. But I did turn off the power before I even started. <laughs> so. Honestly, we got lucky. Can you imagine our house could have burned down? Uh, it wouldn't have had to have been roaring for a little while, but yeah, I know. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, this power wire, plan on replacing anyways, because we got a larger gauge that I was gonna do. And this other wire that runs in between the two outlet boxes, it's maybe seven, eight feet. No, not even six feet of wire, so. So not a big deal? Mm-mm. I can't believe we had a fire in the house. Are you gonna have to replace any of the framing? No, it's, all, it's just Shishugi bond. <laughs> that part of our house will last the longest now. It's now flame retardant. <laughs> So Spencer got that now bad wire out of here and he needs to work on getting the new one in here. But what we're going to start doing right now, just utilizing the daylight, is we're gonna start digging out the trench. The trench that we had originally dug out where we ran the power from the barn over to the house. We're gonna redig that back out so we can start laying the internet in there. But this whole situation, I mean, it's not funny, but it's kind of like, what are the odds that that would happen right after we would wire our fire alarms? We don't actually have them installed. I wish we had. <laughs> but what are the odds that that would happen right after we do that? You know what's good about redigging this all out? What's that? We can see exactly where our trench was because of the ground settling and going down. We know exactly where to dig. It's been annoying besides that because we don't like being able to see all that, but. That's a plus. <laughs> Before, it was nice because he could use the auger and to loosen everything up, but obviously we can't do that this time because there is a conduit down there. So all this has to be done with shovels. I don't know if we are able to do this right now just because the dirt's so hard. We got nothing but hard, dried out clay. Because we haven't had any rain. Yeah, we haven't had a rain and over a month. Can we wet it or? I mean, yeah, I'd probably won't have to soak it. And I don't know. So we're gonna let that soften, come back to it tomorrow, and in the meantime, get some other stuff done. Okay, so what I'm gonna be working on in here is the uh, nailing plates. Well, with the nailing plates, uh, I've kind of put them off until the very end, just so in case I changed anything with my wiring, which I knew would, would probably happen, which did happen, I would wait to install the nailing plates until I had my runs totally done. Where I, there is still a couple wires that I'm gonna change around, but I at least have an idea where those are gonna be. So. According to code, I need nailing plates anywhere where the nearest part of the bore of the hole is the nearest to the nearest surface of the board is an inch and a quarter away. So as far as this room, I've measured every all the bores and they're all between two to two and a half inches away. Uh, so I technically don't need any. I think anything that falls under two inches, I'm probably going to put a nail plate just to be on the safe side. Uh, so there might be one or two that I think I've measured that are right under two inches. So I'll do that for in here, uh, in there where there's two by four framing. 
that's where I'm probably gonna have the most uh, of my uh, nail plates installed. So let me go around, measure, and uh, get to nailing some nail plates in. So we're not actually done with the nail plates yet. We ran out last night, so we still need to finish that up. But now that the ground has had some time to soften back up, we're gonna start digging this trench back out. How do you keep on going when everything you know is falling, falling to pieces? How do you keep on rolling? rolling this area over here is really hard and compacted because we are constantly driving over it. So Spencer's having to take the pickaxe to it. <laughs> you doing okay? Just working on a railroad. <laughs> this dry, compacted clay soil. Mm -hmm. It's no joke. Come here. Good boy. You know what we call that? Not bull's eye, but cow's eye. Get it? It's a female. Would it be heifer's eye? A heifer eye? <laughs> there you go, heifer. <laughs> Pop it. Come get a shot at Papa's face. It's terrifying. I have... Now that the uh, conduit is re-dug up, what we're going to be working on is laying another line of conduit, one for our ethernet cable and then the other for the power line. That's what these boxes actually are going to be for. This is for the power, this is for the ethernet. This is just solely going to be so I don't have one long line running from inside the house all the way to the barn. I can just have a place that it runs from inside the house, disconnects and then runs to the barn. So let's just uh, get to laying some pipe. <laughs> <laughs> another high, another low Above the noise of stuck below Don't lose your spirit Way down and out of steam So last night after it got dark, Spencer headed back inside and continued working on the nail plates. I think he's been through like four boxes already. <laughs> Still not quite done. There's a lot more than we thought we needed. But what we're gonna do is head back out here now and continue working on getting that internet line done because we have some rain on the forecast so we need to get this trench filled back in. Favorite 
rich shade of rose, a flower bed on my favorite stones. I love the ground where your roots have grown. You're my favorite place. Hopefully, you don't come out a foot or you'll get me. Okay, you're through. <laughs> Woo! First of all, the drill wouldn't allow you to go. Wouldn't allow me to go that far. If I would have screamed, would you would have thought that you no. would have gotten me? One day, we'll be done making holes in this house. Whenever I think you're finally done with all the welding and grinding and all that, I find three more projects to make right. an excuse to weld and grind. <laughs> yeah, I'll go the same way. You shed a light that guides me home. Okay, so I wanted to touch on why we're redoing this main power wire to the house. When I initially installed it, it was more than enough for our current setup. But with us spray foaming the house and everything, I'm kicking myself and I should have went with a larger gauge wire. I knew this wire currently would be more than enough for our needs, but yeah, I just, I should have played it more safe. So we're gonna replace this wire with a larger gauge wire and I mean, that's okay because this wire that's currently installed, I'm gonna use it for uh, wiring up our range in the kitchen. For not being an electrician, you sure are doing a good job. You may not know what you're doing, but you look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> Spencer was the only one that could build things. We really need to hurry and get this done right now because we have a very high percentage of rain here <laughs> in just a little bit. Are we gonna get it done? Of course. Before the rain? It probably won't even rain. Right. And the reason why it's so dark in here is because obviously we still don't have power in the house because we had to disconnect that and everything. So there's no lights. We don't have any water pressure, so we can't flush our toilet and uh, obviously no showers. So yeah, we need to get this back up and running ASAP.
Spencer just called me a cone head. <laughs> it's not even pointy. The area up here next to the boxes needs to still be dug out a little bit because now that there's two things of conduit, you know, the area is a little bit wider up there that is required, so we're not quite done digging. More? Yeah. Well, go on, grab the other shovel. Hey, turkey? Supervise them. Making sure I'm digging right. <laughs> We couldn't find our 90, so we used 245s. <laughs> Roll faster! I can't move any faster. <laughs> Holy... You think we're good to go? Yeah. Looking good. Now, on to internet. <laughs> we can now flush the toilet. And you know what else this means? What? I can go shower. <laughs> and I need it. <laughs> Yeah, go. All right, so Ken says I'm not allowed to talk for two minutes straight. <laughs> yeah, just getting these situated and figuring out where everything has to go. <laughs> and I didn't know where to go from there. Let's just uh, get to laying some pipe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that was good. Was that one good? <laughs>